So I basically trashed that whole thing and I took too long, um, roughly the next year to write the book myself. And um, I, I, I call that my million dollar mistake because the, the, the first year I wrote the book from literally the time I launched it, I launched my business at the same time. One year later, I was doing over a million dollars a year mm. in, in a terrible economy. And I was like, man, if I could have launched it a year earlier, you know, I'd have made another million. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, of course. <laughs> um, so yeah. so I, I learned some some big lessons in all that pain. Boom, 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 boom. What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. Wiki. So we were out in Florida a couple weeks ago, and we were hopping into an Uber. And Ooh, don't do that. And one of the guys that was in the Uber was today's guest. So really? this is ju- this is our Uber <laughs> driver that we're bringing on today. <laughs> And this Uber driver is pretty cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, we really hung out for like multiple days with this dude. We had a steak dinner with him, <laughs> had some drinks, shared more rides with him, I think. Yeah. No, he uh, wasn't actually our Uber driver. He was also an Uber passenger, if you haven't right. caught on. <laughs> if you haven't caught on. Uh, man, that was cool. Yeah, we was out at Rich Sheffern's event in, uh, I don't know if it was an event. It was live stream recording. Yeah, it's an event. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, it yeah. was a gathering. A gathering, more virtual, but uh, yeah, about 30, 40 of us or so in person. It was a good time. That's where we met Mr. Rob. Rob Cosberg. That's right, Rob Cosberg. And uh, I mean, to be very honest, we didn't know, you know who he was prior to, didn't know how how freaking awesome of a business and solution he's built for folks. And that's what we're chatting about here. Yeah. So let's all put the book biz. Yeah. So he, he teaches people how to, well, he helps people self publish their book. He helps yep. them get the book into PR, uh, you know, traditional media like uh, TV and radio and on podcasts and all over the place. Yeah. And then he actually helps with the marketing of the book, including advertising and helping you build, you know, how, helping you map out your funnels behind the book and all that kind of stuff. Pretty much everything around book promotions and how to make money off of the books. That's sort of Rob's expertise yeah it's called bestseller publishing is his solution to that and rob here on this episode holy moly all right so um i'm just gonna say get the notes on this one um, <laughs> dude <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute how to get those notes but just put that in your mind just note yourself get the notes this is a <laughs> master class i feel like i use that a lot i you should really probably do. stop saying this is a master class but this You're one valuing everything if you just call every single yeah, but we do a lot of master classes <laughs> That's true. I guess no this one class. this one is an exhaustive resource on, not exhausting. Not exhausting. An exhaustive resource on the topic of how to get our book written, uh, how to market the book, how to get into traditional media, how to build out free plus shipping book funnels, what oh. technology to use, who to use for the printing and shipping, what the offers are specifically in that free plus shipping, and how to price them, how to price it, what the offer should be like, what your copy should look like, what elements oh. to focus on on your free plus shipping book landing page. Like I think I told Rob as soon as we turned off the recording this is the most like densely packed gold nugget after gold nugget Mm. after gold nugget episode we've done in a long long time i don't want to devalue the other episodes (laughs) but this one is just like tactical like a mofo here's the cool thing rob too he's just down to earth like great happy dude um just does great work fun guy to hang out with Loves his golf and cigars and uh, <laughs> it's just in cars. Yep. Yeah, that's just sweet. Um, yeah, man. I mean, and then the fact that he has this and, and he was so, so generous with his strategies and all of the insights he's had over the years with not only his own business, but just studying this for 13 years in the book business. I mean, he laid it all out. He didn't hold back. Every question we had, he had like an in-depth answer. So, um, yeah. I mean, if you are even slightly interested in growing some authority and, and uh, you know, making a lot of sales in the back of a very, very simple funnel. This is the one for you. Mm-hmm. So um, besides that, shoot, what was I going to say? I don't know. I think that's about it. Oh, we, we cover a lot. We should, just, we should just get to the episode and yeah. let, the, let him cover it. No need to say any more other than that. Uh, get the notes. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> I want to loop back to that. To get the notes, uh, you can get them at hustleandflowchart.com slash comp, C O M P. Hustleflowchart.com slash comp. There it is. Or you can text the word comp. What was that? Comp. There you go. To 38470. That's 38470. I didn't use a weird voice because Matt does that. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. I just have a weird voice. Oh, we were told that earlier today, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> we have a similar weird voice. 
Yeah, so 38470 comp. and uh, text the word comp. You'll get the notes for free. Be quick because they go away in two weeks of this episode going live. That's a fortnight. That is a fortnight. They go away in a fortnight. No, we should start using that. We should. That's good. <laughs> Sound fancy. Yeah, people don't use the word fortnight no, enough. No, it's rare. Uh, yeah, so that's about that. So um, before we go over there, we want to give a shout out to our buddies over at Ahrefs. Ahrefs.com. That one. That place. You can actually get a seven-day, $7 free trial. That's a dollar a day. Go into your best announcer voice and sell it to me. Go. Um, this is the best SEO tool ever. I'm a shaky that announcer. That sounds like your timid voice. A timid announcer. Yeah. That'd be weird to listen to like a, a football game and announcing. With, yeah, next hey, hey guys, I, I, th- I think you might might like this. It's um, it's it's really really cool. I, I mean, don't think Ahrefs is going to like this. All right, scratch it. So let's restart. Okay. All right. Ahrefs.com. <laughs> seven day, seven dollar trial. It Damn is right. the best <laughs> SEO tool. We use it in our business. We used it long, long, long before they were ever a sponsor. Like very long before. It's, it was just serendipity that they became a sponsor. I don't even remember how they became a sponsor, but when they wanted to be a sponsor, we're like, hell yeah, I we use that. reached out because they love us. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, hell yeah, we use it in our business. Um, but basically what Ahrefs is, it's an SEO tool. It allows you to do keyword research. So you type in a keyword. It'll give you a whole bunch of other keywords that you can mm-hmm. go after. It'll tell you how much traffic it's getting. You plug in your own website. It'll keep on track of what words you're ranking for and the movement of those time. words yep. in real time so you can log in and be like hey am i work uh, am i ranking for hard boiled eggs today oh look i'm on page three for hard boiled eggs maybe well, i'm I can ranked get to- for bacon and bacon is better than your eggs yeah but you're ranked on page seven i looked on hrefs shit so I quit. <laughs> anyway, go check out Ahrefs. It is it honestly it is the best SEO tool. It's pretty much like it does everything f- when it comes to SEO as far as mm-hmm. like knowing what keywords to go after, knowing where you're ranking, finding new keywords, finding what keywords your competitors rank for, finding YouTube videos that you can go and try to rank for. Matt, 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 you're letting all the secret sauce out. All right. Leave some to be desired. Seven dollars, <laughs> seven days. That's a h r e f s dot com. Yeah, man. So go get it, and they have a lot of cool tutorials there. So if you have questions on how to do all this fancy stuff that Matt was just spilling out at you, mm. they'll actually explain it for free over there in their blog. Yeah. So you'll love it. Ahrefs dot com. A Ahrefs dot com. That's a h r e f s dot com. Damn, that was good. <laughs> Didn't even rehearse that. We're scarily similar All okay right. we're gonna go away now and go chat with mr rob rob welcome to the show man how you doing thanks great to be with you guys love it yeah we're back again it's been a few weeks or something huh since we hung out in florida yeah that was two florida trips ago for us yeah <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's away. right that's right because you went to uh pod fest that's yeah. right yeah you, i saw you yeah commented on some stuff with dustin matthews and i did Christine. i love dustin you guys are buddies with dustin down in san diego so yeah right. I, I love that you guys hooked up shout out to dustin <laughs> wellfit <laughs> there it is love yeah, it was- dustin he li- he listens, so hey, Dustin. <laughs> yeah, man, you're a Florida a Florida guy. Are you moving? Because I think you're making that move somewhat soon, right? I am. I am. We're going to open an East Coast office. I'm going to keep my West Coast office here in, in L.A. Uh, and open in an East Coast office. I'm moving to St. Augustine, and I'm from Florida. I lived in yeah. Florida, you know, 30 years of, of my life. So, you know, it's it's a little bit going home for me. Yeah, that's cool. That's special yeah. too. And and now you can play all the golf you want out there and <laughs> go crazy. Well, I still got to work a little. Oh, come on. <laughs> You're going to save a lot of money on taxes and stuff. So there's like golf built in on that. This. That is true. <laughs> I'm more excited about saving money on taxes than I am about the golf. That's true. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. So we uh we go way 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 back to three weeks ago. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. We really hit it off. We had a we had a couple of really cool conversations and, mm-hmm. and great dinners together and stuff. It was fun. It we all did. it all started because we just happened to all ride in the same Uber together. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whatever I know with uh, with Wes Watson, man. And so then <laughs> shout out to Wes, right? Yeah, and, that's right. And, uh, that was that was really cool, man. I loved meeting him. Yeah, now yeah, him and the whole gang out there were, yeah, just for everyone listening, uh, Rich Sheffern's event, the Coalition to Save Internet Businesses. And Best name for a... It's a long name. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised I got it off. <laughs> yeah, I got it on the first go. Oh, man. But yeah. It's, what, it's both the best name and the worst name, right? It's right. Like, <laughs> what is that about? Yeah. Not the easiest acronym <laughs> in there. <laughs> CSIB, but eh. <laughs> it's all good. It worked it's out. Right. 
Yeah. But right. anyway, let's, let's, um, I want to get our audience to know you a little bit. So yeah. can you give us your, your backstory a little bit? How did you get into business and entrepreneurship and you know, how did you get to where you are today? Wow. Uh, <laughs> man, uh, that's a big story. So I don't know <laughs> I mean, start, start wherever it's, wherever it feels the most relevant to you to start. <laughs> Well, when you, when you talk about entrepreneurship, it's, it's kind of in the blood. I mean, my grandparents owned gas stations in Washington, D.C., and, and I'm a car nut. And, and mm-hmm. part of that is because, you know, from the time I was 18 months old, like I was like sitting on the hood of a car while, you know, my dad and my uncle are working on cars and they raced cars and, and all that stuff. So I, you know, being in their gas station and growing up was a great entrepreneurial experience. And then my dad owned real estate companies and, and that got me involved in real estate, which was a like meteoric rise for me yeah. uh, right up until the time it was, you know, a meteoric collapse. Probably yeah. Yeah, oh, nine come, come back to earth, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just came back home. <laughs> yeah. yes. yes. I crashed hard in 2007, mm. 2008. Uh, you know, I had a business that was doing 100 million a year in transactions uh, in real estate. Uh, mortgages and uh, and closings, title insurance, and uh, hmm. man, that just you know, I mean, it dried up right when the oh, yeah. when the financial collapse happened. Uh, lending had completely frozen, and uh, and so that business, you know, because of it, froze. Hmm. Uh, and then that eventually led me to uh, writing my first book, hmm. and uh, back in two thousand and eight, and using that book to uh, start a financial services company, probably not the smartest thing to do during a financial collapse. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, wow, looking back, I'm like, really? You started it's got to finan- be a trendsetter somewhere. So <laughs> that's you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. Trend of making bad decisions. For that. <laughs> but I, you know, that, that book led to the company, you know, becoming a multi-million dollar company and and people coming to me organically saying, how the heck are you doing it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, yeah, my book. I mean, my book got me on radio, TV, uh, speaking engagements, and, and that led to uh, you know, lead generation and, and other ways uh, to, uh, to grow that business. And then that led me you know, to sell that business and start Bestseller Publishing. Uh, it's going on nine years ago now. That's wild. I mean, yeah. That's a fast story. I mean, I mean, I just took you through since I was 18 months old to today. Wow. Perfect. <laughs> I think you, you, you did really well. Yeah. Better than most. <laughs> most of it take the whole episode. Yeah. We've definitely had people on the show who would take the entire hour to tell us that same amount of information. So, right. <laughs> well, I was afraid that, you know what? I don't want to tell too many stories here because I'm sure there are more questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, really, coming. really what we want to, we want to chat about is more of the book publishing stuff too. So, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like, I think I think that's a pretty good overview to to let the audience know where you know where where the book business kind of started. So yeah, that's really so, what we're trying to do. What was that first book that you published back then that got you going? Yeah, it was called Life After Debt, uh-huh. um, and I uh, I wrote it in 2008. I made a lot of mistakes with it. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. I actually wrote it on a- advice uh, from Dan Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I was, you know, part of GKIC before it was GKIC and big, big fan and follower of, of planet Dan forever and ever. And oh, yeah. basically I, I asked, you know, look, if, if you were in my position and, you know, wanting to start a business in an industry where you're completely unknown, what would you do? And he was like, first thing I do is I'd write a book. And, um, it, something just rang true to me that, okay, that, that seems to make sense. Um, Mike Dillard, uh, mm-hmm. also advised me, I was at a conference uh, of his back in 2007, maybe one of his first ones. And he told me about magnetic sponsoring and that yeah, book yeah. that he wrote. And, you know, and, and so I, I kind of followed that advice and those, those instincts. And I wrote that book and, um, you know, I mean, it was pretty yeah. terrible, uh, from the standpoint <laughs> of the, not the book, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so the, the, the market, right. The, yeah. the environment was pretty terrible. And, uh, and the book was just a game changer for me. I, I started using it to, uh, you know, I'm a hustler, so mm-hmm. I worked hard with it. Like I didn't, a lot of people write a book and then they just kind of cross their fingers and think it's going to just do magic by itself. But yeah. I knew that wasn't the case. And so I, I started hustling with it and um, using that book to, to get first uh, like PR and media locally, mm-hmm. yep. uh, which that was kind of my big break, uh, believe it or not, which, which was odd. But um I How so? Like, what was what was the break for you there? Yeah, I, I I used it. I got I like sent the book out to a bunch of local radio, TV stations, you know, media outlets, and I I got a bite, 
hmm. from a program manager and uh, you know which of course you would because the economy was terrible and stocks were down 50 percent and so here's a guy who wrote a book you know that that's an expert right mm -hmm. because you're a, an author because <laughs> you're an author yeah <laughs> yeah and um and certainly um you know i took him up on the offer and uh it was for like a five minute you know q a uh, on a local radio station but a local radio station that had a pretty good you know bite um of the market and, uh, and that day I appeared, you know, morning-ish, I think it was maybe 10, 11 a.m., great interview. At the end of that interview, um, this is before free plus shipping or, or any of those things, right? Really kind of not pre-internet, but pre the, the internet we know of, right? Yeah, right, sure. And, um, and so I said, you know, look, uh, and, and as a gift, I, I want to offer any of your listeners a, a free copy of my book. And... And I'll even ship it to you for free. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, like no cost. All I want you to do is either call the radio station or call my office. And I gave my office telephone number. And, uh, you know, we got, I don't know, 10, 15 calls that day and, and, uh, and a bunch of books. And I didn't know what I'd get, right? Would I get a mm -hmm. thousand and it would break me? I mean, who knew, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, of course, that'd be a good problem to have. But, but <laughs> that night, they replayed um, that, uh, you know, five minute spot. And I was in my office, it was about six o'clock at night, and the phone rings, and it's a lady, and, and she says, is this Rob Cosberg? And I'm like, you know, oh, man, do I owe you money? <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know, like, someone, someone found me. And, uh, and I said, yeah. And she goes, is this Rob Cosberg, you know, the author who was on the radio? And I was like, well, yes. Sounding yes, better. Yeah. <laughs> Sounding better. And uh, we had about a 20-minute conversation, no, no selling involved at all, just serving, and um she became a client and it was worth about $6,000 to my company. That was the same day that I was on my very first media appearance. Wow. And I just thought, you know what, I'm, I'm on to something here. And within six to eight months of that, um, you know, we were buying airtime. I had my own one hour live radio show uh, that ended up being three to four hours live a week call in show. Wow, and you know we were spending at the height about twenty thousand a month, which was a lot of money um, just on radio, but twenty thousand a month plus all the other stuff that I was doing, and you know the business was multi seven figures, uh, mm. all from just offering a free book on the radio. Crazy. So would you would you recommend? <laughs> and it's kind of selfish actually, because my wife is just literally she found a gap in the whole coronavirus thing right now. Um, she's going to appear on a local TV show tomorrow, a uh, news station. She has a book and uh, you're it. actually giving me a lot of ideas, mm -hmm. but like, would you recommend something like this now? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, hmm. if, if it's any kind of mass market offer, yeah. it, my, my offer from 2007, eight would work today because it's a financial offer sure. and, and that's a mass market offer. Now, you know, I, I still go on TV and radio and that kind of thing. I was on KTLA hmm. um, uh, some time back and, uh, and I offered my book in the free plus shipping funnel right on KTLA and, you know, good morning LA mm -hmm. segment. I had like 50 downloads, you know, within, wow. within two minutes just from, from that one. And of course, you know, that, that gets them into the funnel and all of that other yep. stuff. But yep. Absolutely, I would do that if I were your wife. Hundred nice. percent. Nice. All right, I'll tell her that tonight when I go home. <laughs> now, with that first bo book, did you, did you write that book yourself, like the, the entire book, or did you work with ghostwriter or anything like that? Uh, yes, to both of those things. <laughs> uh, you know, I like I said, I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I only knew that based on what my English teachers had told me, I should not write a book myself. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And so I hired a ghostwriter, and you know, you can spend. I mean, you can spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a ghostwriter, mm -hmm. um, but you know, typical ghostwriting is you know it's it's mid five figures, it's thirty fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and so I I hired a ghostwriter, and um, you know I went through kind of the what I would call the traditional ghostwriting process, which is more of an interview style process. Mm -hmm. Uh, I gave her what my table of contents would be. She asked me questions on those table of contents. Came to, back to me. This was about three months of interviews and then about three months of writing. Came back to me with like a 180 page book. And after reading like two chapters, I was like, this is terrible. Oh, and man. Uh, it was terrible, not because it was poorly written. It was actually well written. It was terrible because it wasn't in my voice. Yeah. And, uh, and you knew I, that I, immediately. You're like, this immediately, is right? Yeah. I, I wanted something that was conversational, something that, you know, had my personality in it. 
And you can't get that from a standard interview process. Now, I, I, I learned later when I was starting Best Star Publishing that, that that's actually a really common problem. But the first person to experience it in my life was me. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good and, place uh, to start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I basically trashed that whole thing. And I took too long, um, roughly the next year, to write the book myself. And um, I, I, I call that my million dollar mistake because the, the, the first year I wrote the book from literally the time I launched it, I launched my business at the same time. One year later, I was doing over a million dollars a year mm. in, in a terrible economy. And I was like, man, if I could have launched it a year earlier, you know, I'd have made another million. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, of course. <laughs> um, so yeah. so I, I learned some some big lessons in all that pain. That's, I mean, that's a really cool story though. And what a heck of a way to kick it off too. And, and I'm sure what after that, it just, did that open up the love and this whole model of offering it to other people? It sounds like, you know, with bestseller came around yeah. and yeah. so how does, and, and maybe just like give us a little like overview of bestseller publishing and what that love looks to. like. Yeah. Yeah. Love to. Thanks for asking. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's basically uh, what I would have loved to write a check for, um, you know, 13 years ago when I was starting this journey. So, yeah. you know, we help people from concept to completed books. So all the ghost writing, you know, we have a dozen writers on staff that uh, most of them are award-winning screenwriters here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know anything mm -hmm. about the, the business in Hollywood, you know, they, they don't work all the time. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, and they can be really talented, but be in between projects. Um, so we have great, great talent. And then, of course, all the editing and formatting and design and, and publishing and distribution. Uh, then we do the full book launch, you know, paid ads and social media and press releases and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, really hitting um, bestseller, like really making it happen, not for an hour and not in some <laughs> narrow little category. but yeah, like on Amazon or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what people think of because there are so many scammers out there. But yeah but like legitimately. And then we also have three full-time uh, publicists in my office here in, in Pasadena. And, and so we book our clients on real TV and media. We've had people on everything from the Howard Stern show to Reader's Digest wow. and, you know, you name it. And I've, I've been on a dozen different TV shows myself. So, and tons of great podcasts also. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's kind of soup to nuts all around the book. And then the, of course, the next step for most of my clients is how do I make money with the book? And so, uh, we either coach them and, and teach them how to do that, or we can even do some of it for them, like funnel creation and 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 guidance and coaching on that stuff. So yeah. it's fun. It's it's yeah. pretty comprehensive. Oh man, I, I love the fact that you're <laughs> you're probably taking some of the best writers in the world that are underutilized, you know, know, and and they're just sitting around waiting for work. And here you are, splat the center of L.A. You're like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can I do know. some work, and then you know, know you have this perfect solution too. Yeah, do you want to keep waiting tables, or would you prefer to keep working in your craft? Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> that's literally what it is for this these people, right? Yeah. They make pretty good money waiting tables, but who wants to do that when they could be working in their craft, making good money? And so, that's yeah. Right. I, I like to think that we, you know, we do good. Uh, yeah, I remember well. Andre Chopra talking about doing that exact same thing for writing emails too. Mm -hmm. He hires people to write uh, out of work, uh, what screenwriters to, yeah. to write email sequences for them. That's yeah, so, so they're smart. the best storytellers, right? I mean, that's exactly they, it. Yeah, they've got to craft a great story for for TV, for for movies, and and we don't need them to craft that story from scratch because they have the client there giving them the story. They just need to spice it up, you know, yeah, juice yeah. it up, just say it in the right way. So yeah, it's, it's a great, it works great. Nice. And, and how did you crack the code on the whole, uh, you know, making it your own voice or, you know, the author's voice and all that. So what does that kind of look like in the process? That's a great question. You know, I'm, I'm almost never asked that question. So that, that's a, that's a great question. <laughs> yes. Um, what? Yeah, yeah, nice job. Score. <laughs> Go Joe. No, I, you know, I mean, when I, because I, I tell that story, right? And I tell the story about it, and then people move right on to mm -hmm. whatever else. They're like, okay, well, Rob answered it. No, I really didn't. Um, I, I just said it's a problem. But the sure. way we did it is um, we, we kind of crafted our own. I, I never saw anybody do this before, but I found that it worked for me. It worked for the first five to 10 writer, uh, uh, authors uh, that we worked with. And so we just kind of honed it. And the, the simplest way, uh, there's, there's lots of steps in the process, but the simplest way to describe it is we take every chapter of a client's book 
and look at it like a great TED Talk. Mm -hmm. And if you think of a great TED Talk, the best ones, and, and I mean, there are now, there's a whole industry built around teaching people to do TED Talks. That's right. right. We know a few uh, of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and they're needed because, you know, bad TED Talk sucks, but a good <laughs> yes, one is they like, do. wow. Yeah. And so a good TED Talk generally has like a great story to begin that captivates the audience. Oftentimes there's an open loop, meaning they don't culminate the story, mm -hmm. right? They, they kind of leave you hanging right on the precipice. Mm hmm. Uh, then they talk about what they've learned from the stories, the points, and then they come back around and they conclude the story or they, they conclude it in some way to, you know, kind of prove their point and, and make for a strong mm -hmm. conclusion. And they're about 17, 18 minutes long, which is actually like a great length of a chapter. Mm -hmm. So I kind of saw this and I thought, you know, since, since we want our clients to speak their book, not to write it. Uh, we thought, well, if they could speak it in this format and we could help them to craft the content in this format, then we have both content and context. Right. And it works It works beautifully. Oh, man. That's that's brilliant. I mean, that's because uh, I've noticed just in the way that I write that, uh, you know, of course, the voice, if it comes from your voice, it's going to be the best possible thing. And um, yeah, just writing can flow or ideas can flow in interesting ways. And, and it right. seems like you're basically capturing that in a creative way like this. And then you have all the mechanisms behind that to actually have it develop into a book that's cohesive and strung together nicely. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what you have a big podcast. What do people love about your podcast? It's, it's, your, it's you guys. It's, it's, a, it's yeah. your story. It's your personality. It's, it's your vibe. And so you know, it's the same is true with a book. I mean, you're writing a textbook. You do want mm -hmm. to teach people, but you're not writing a, a manual. You you want your personality to come out. And that's not easy, but it is possible with the right frameworks. Yeah. No, that's that's it's it's good and it's needed too because there's a lot of dull and dry books, especially, you know, oh, yeah. That, we're talking about free plus shipping offers and you know, we're seeing those for a good reason because yeah. they work, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know if now is a good time to get into that. But well, before uh, we get into that, I actually want to touch on the, the PR aspect for a second and maybe see if you had any sort of advice or tips for once somebody's got a book out, what what's some easy ways that or maybe not easy, but what are some ways that people can go about approaching media to to help feature it? Yeah, great question. Um, it depends what kind of media, but, you know, we, we always tell our clients, look, um, if, if you've never been on radio TV, uh, even if your offer isn't like this mass market appeal offer, then you should get some radio and TV just for your own credibility and authority, right? Like mm -hmm. if, if, if you're a financial advisor, uh, then it might be easy, you know, to reach an audience on television. But if you're, you know, a roofer in Des Moines, and, and we do books for roofers and plumbers, you name it, believe it or not. <laughs> But if you're a roofer in Des Moines, getting on TV in Los Angeles isn't exactly going to get you your target market. No. However, the people in Des Moines are going to be like, I mean, this dude wrote a book. He's a roofer. He wrote a book. He's appearing on television. Why would I go anywhere else? Yep. I mean, th this guy is clearly at the top of his craft. So, so we... Yeah, that doesn't answer your question, but, but, but <laughs> well, if it's a we good start, piece. It's a good yeah. starting piece because credibility, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you want the media, not just for the leads. You want the media for, you know, a way to warm up leads in the future. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to like mass media, what we suggest is, you, you know, you need a great hook, right? Um, and so, and sometimes your book isn't, by itself, like the title of your book, maybe to a narrow audience. Mm -hmm. So you might have to broaden that a little bit and make it more appealing to more people. So you take your book, you broaden the hook of it, uh, and you want that created in some type of like segment or, or what we would call one sheet. Mm -hmm. And we always suggest, look, you find the producer uh, of a particular station, you, you send them a copy of your book to warm them up, no one does that. They email them, which is the easiest thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. But that's also the easiest thing to delete. Yeah. So they won't delete your book if it's been sent in the mail. It will True. get their attention. So a little, little cover letter explaining who you are and that you're going to be in touch. And that will get their attention to the point where they'll take your telephone call. And once you have them on the phone, it's easy to get, you know, to, to get a, a placement because they need credible people yep. to get on mass media. And, and they're so, always looking for content too, right? They're constantly searching. Constantly. They, they have a voracious appetite for, for content. 
but they only want it from people that they don't want to let some crackpot on, right? Mm -hmm. That happened to, to get through. Generally speaking, you know, if you get their book and you you skim through it, you'll know if they're a crackpot pretty fast. Well, we not. allow those on our podcast. I mean, we're Clearly. talking to one. No, I'm just not you. No. Clearly you do. <laughs> no. So, so, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, from the perspective of like of media, um, what what have you found to be the most effective between like radio, local media, mass market, going on podcasts? What what seems to move the needle the most? Um, you know, among yeah. the various media platforms. Yeah, great question. Uh, completely dependent upon the the genre of of the client, right? What the client is like. For me, um, I don't think I've ever had one telephone call into the office from an appearance on TV or radio. And I've been in on some pretty big. TV markets like San Diego, San Francisco, Los Angeles. These are big markets. Yeah. Uh, however, I go on a podcast like your podcast. I've, I've been on, uh, you know, uh, Entrepreneur on Fire a couple mm. of times, yep. and and I I get clients from that because it's a very narrow marketplace. So so the book offer is you know write a book is, is not a great mass market offer. However, if you're a vet right? A veterinarian. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a financial advisor, right? If, if there's some type of mass market for what your discussions are, stem cell therapy, doctors, chiropractors, then then certainly radio and, and television will work for you as well as the, nar the narrower media works great as well. We, we tell our mm -hmm. clients always, always get on podcasts. Yeah. Um, just, just at least get some radio and TV to kind of even more establish your authority with your prospects down the road. Yeah, no, that's that's really good. And then with that, any kind of appearance, you can now take that and repurpose it or rework it into other content to really mm -hmm. plaster that everywhere. Really, all it takes is one pretty solid appearance from a pretty yep. credible source, and then it's kind of you can light it on fire and <laughs> you know make yourself <laughs> yeah. look a lot bigger than you might already be. Yeah, yeah, and well, and and that's completely true. I mean, I I said that my TV appearances didn't make the phone ring once, but that's not entirely true because I've repurposed those television appearances and I use them as ads mm. on my Facebook channel and Instagram and whatever. And that always attracts clients into our funnel. So instant credibility. So it, yeah. It, yeah it, it may not be, you know, uh, somebody watching at eight 30 in the morning, you know, in, Geez, I, I've appared, you know, in West Texas. I, I've appeared, you know, in the early days. I just wanted to get on TV. I was on two stations in Wichita. Yeah. I mean, no one's yeah. calling from Wichita. No, you know I mean? but those appearances on social media work. Yeah, yeah, yeah or even just putting them on landing pages and you know yeah. use them in like just or, or just like editing them into your sales pitches and stuff to build the credibility. I mean, you see that all the time. I yeah, seems like it's pretty effective. But do you have it any? Really um, is. Because with TV and whatnot, I mean, how does it work? Because you have to ask them for what a copy of the recording or you can, I believe, from most of these places. So you can then uh, use it in the future for yourself, right? Yeah, you can. Um, and there are services that will pull it for you. That's right. But for the most part, you can pull it right off of their, they're going to post it on their social media and they're going to post it on their website as well to drive traffic to it. That's Plus true. they're going to have like a like a like an opening commercial and a closing commercial. So uh, and you can pull that, you know, we pull that stuff for our clients all the time. It's easy do. to do. Okay. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Love it. Now for back to, uh, you know, an author, just thinking about getting a book going, you know, a lot of folks feel like, you know, you constantly hear it, It's like, oh, I'm going to write a book one day. I'm going to, you know, I got an idea for a book, but uh, typically there's not like a vision of where this book's going to take them. So right. what are some tips on the, like the intention or the goal of a book and how you've seen it best applied to a, maybe a bigger business or a cause after the fact? Yeah. They, yeah. Great question. Um, it's really like one of the first things we talk about with somebody, even before we get started with them is what is your goal with the book? What mm -hmm. are we trying to accomplish for you, for your business? Because if they don't know that, then it's really hard to satisfy them, right? Mm -hmm, it's hard definitely. to make them happy uh, unless you just back up a dump truck of cash and put it in their house. I <laughs> imagine like, that good. would make them happy, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so we always want to find that out first. Those that are just thinking, well, I'm going to write the book and, and make hundreds of thousands or millions from royalties, you know, they, they need to be told of kind of harsher, more mm -hmm. honest truth that, look, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, it doesn't work that way unless you're, you know, a Stephen King or J.K. Rowling or, and yeah. it didn't work that way for them in the beginning, right? I mean, all. they had yeah. to, they had to earn their, you know, their way, so to speak. 
So for us, it, it's a client that has some kind of back end that the book is going to lead to. Um, you know, a financial advisor, when he gets clients, an average client to a financial advisor might be worth ten, twenty, fifty thousand uh, dollars. To a real estate professional or real estate investor, it might be the same. Mm-hmm. To a coach or consultant, it might be two or three or four thousand dollars. That's a great number too. Sure. Mm-hmm. And so you can start just doing math. Okay, so here's eight ways you can use your book to get you know, one new great lead or one new great prospect every single month that you can, you know, sell your three, five, ten thousand dollar thing to. And and when you start uh, adding like paid traffic and mm-hmm. like real sophisticated methods to it, then then it is like backing up a dump truck of cash. <laughs> sure. Right. I mean literally it, it it's it's like having an ATM when you add the more sophisticated methodology to it. Yeah. No, that's great. So, and so really just know that there should be a back end something oh, yeah. to the book. And, and, uh, I guess that kind of leads now to so basically the book's not going to make me rich by itself. Dang it, Rob. All right, we're done here. Man, I just lost the whole podcast. Yeah, everybody just signed off. <laughs> but that's not what Tim Ferriss says. No, <laughs> that's right. So, and, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe this does lead to, you know, the best ways that you've seen it now applied and free plus shipping, something that, you know, we chatted about in Florida. A lot of folks yeah. use it. You said you've even recorded a lot of, you know, video recorded a lot of these funnels just to study them. But I do. It's, uh, let's talk about your experience around those and, and how people can apply that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love, um, obviously I love the free plus shipping model. Um, when I didn't know what I was doing, the free plus free shipping model um, <laughs> that, right. I, that I ran, you know, brought me millions of dollars in revenue in and allowed me to scale a business in a really pretty bad economy. And, you know, now I, I don't have the mass market, so to speak, to deal with, um, but we have tools now to target. So, so you know, I, as, as said before, when, when we were talking, I mean, every time I see a free plus shipping offer of, of some kind that's been running for a little while, I'm buying it and, mm-hmm. and I'm going through their funnel. I want to see what kind of upsells they have, what kind of downsells they have. And ultimately, they're always leading to some type of high ticket offer, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe it's continuity or, or maybe it's something that they're selling. And so, you know, I mean, uh, Russell Brunson is a friend of mine. Uh, mm-hmm. He's he's paid us to do PR and media for him. I was part of his inner circle group for a number of years. We helped him launch his his various books. And, you know, I mean, he's, he's built a company that arguably may be approaching a billion dollar valuation, mm-hmm. uh, ClickFunnels, basically on the back of of these free plus shipping funnels. Wow. Um, now that may be an example that somebody hears and goes, uh, you know, well, that's, you know, that, that, that's just him. And mm-hmm. Russell is certainly, you know, one He's of the a kind, Russell right? factor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there, there are plenty of us. I mean, my, you know, I shared with you guys, my, my book, mm-hmm. uh, just, I, I probably run eight to 10 different funnels at any given time. My book is one of those funnels. And, and that is led to about 3 million in profit over the last, Three million in, in sales, not mm-hmm. profit, mm-hmm. in revenue over the last twelve months, wow. and um, yeah. you know, I mean, it's hard to argue with that. Uh, we've probably in that period of time sold something like fifteen thousand copies, which means there's also fifteen thousand physical copies of my book sitting on people's desks. Yeah. That has ultimately led to, you know, great profit. And so, so there, there's other ways to do it with organic traffic and not a free plus shipping funnel. And we show our clients how to do it with speaking engagements, how to do it with media and PR, how to do it with organic traffic. But if you can add that gasoline to the fire, then man, it's, it's powerful. Yeah. Now, have you noticed with the free plus shipping, any sort of specific funnel elements that really work? Like after somebody grabs the free book, this is kind of the next best offer to put right after a book. So we, we've we've tried free plus shipping offers with our books. We have a couple books that we put out. Um, we've never actually had really great success with them. We don't have them running right now. Uh, right. But I think, you know, there's there's a few elements that we probably missed. So I'm kind of curious, what what do you think is like the, the, the sort of best flow after the book? Yeah, I love it. Great, great question. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever been asked that um, also. Uh, the, I always tell people the, the first upsell should be an audio version of the book. Mm, uh, so, so basically book is number one and, and, you know, free book, uh, and, and compare it to on Amazon right now on Amazon, my book is for sale for twenty four ninety five, or you can get it 
from me, right? Mm -hmm. For nothing, just pay seven dollars and ninety-five cents. So I'm competing against Amazon. Um, from there, there should be one one bump, and and the bump could be maybe seventeen to thirty-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, and a bump is nothing more than a place that that you know on the initial uh, checkout page gives them once they put in the credit card information gives them an option to increase the the value mm -hmm. uh, you know to you the seller by getting something generally my suggestion is if you can find a way to put dollars back in their pocket in other words show them a strategy mm -hmm. that will help them to make money with the thing that the book that you're selling them that's a great bump and then the first upsell being the audio version of the book and uh, okay. that by itself is a great funnel. You can leave it just right there and go into the next step, which is to sell your high ticket thing, which generally you want to do on a telephone call or maybe an automated webby or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, it could be a scheduling thing or an application right after yep. that that uh, upsell. Yep. I mean, that's so uh, simple, you yeah. know, like for anyone to do. and. Yeah, I can imagine even if you don't have that high ticket offer, it's a great way to liquidate all your costs for marketing to get that lead but, or a buyer, really. It's more yeah. than a lead. So you're you're literally getting kind of free leads, ide ideally, or, or buyers that you can then follow up with. And, you know, luckily, you know, at that point, you've already built your trust and you got some good stuff that you can kind of give them. Yeah. You know, the only caveat I would say is mm -hmm. in the beginning, you might even be making money on the front end mm -hmm. with your funnel. And yeah. I was, that's what we were doing in the beginning. I was like, OMG, <laughs> this is like the greatest thing ever. Because, you know, we spend a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money is relative to, to people, but sure. we spend 50 to 70,000 a month on, on paid traffic on Facebook and YouTube and, and, and Google and sometimes LinkedIn and other things. Mm -hmm. And I was making you know, that and another 10, 15, 20,000 bucks and getting all these leads and apps. I was like, this is amazing. Now, unfortunately that ended. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, so we go in the hole uh, on the front end, we liquidate a portion of the cost, but um, the, the, the beautiful thing about it, uh, I, I'd say there's two things. If you do have a high ticket thing on the back end, a buyer, someone who pulls out their credit card is, for us, we've done the math, 16 times more valuable than an email opt-in. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I need 16 email opt-ins just to equal one person that gives me $7.95. Wow. And so the math there just works in the favor. Even if you're going in the red on the front end, the math works in the favor of the person that, that's the buyer as opposed to the email opt-in. Well, that should just make it a no-brainer. I don't have the math on top of my head, but just the fact that like, if you don't have a book, and especially with a book and a funnel like this, if you're just capturing leads, yeah, you're, you're, it's going to be way more expensive, a lot more work to get to the sale, the ultimate goal you're trying to get them to. This basically bypasses and shortcuts that whole thing and makes selling on the back end way easier. It is. Something and and there's so many things you can do. I mean, hmm. you know, we, we have... A little ashamed of this, but uh, you know, we we generally just wait for people to fill our application out and then get on the phone with them. And I told my guys, I'm like, guys, you know, we're getting a thousand to fifteen hundred buyers a month. How about if you have some free time calling them? <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> you know, I mean, how about? And, and of course they do sometimes and, and they don't most of the time because their, <laughs> their schedules are pretty fi filled, right? With sure. the apps getting them. But, but, you know, just recently we basically set aside, you know, a, a new person that is, is making those outbound calls and we're closing deals with people that just got too busy mm -hmm. to, you know, actually fill out an application and follow up. But, but they've read the book or the book is sitting on their desk and they were interested. So, yeah. you know, I mean, there's so much you can do, uh, you know, when you have those kinds of leads coming in. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now what, what, what kind of price point would you sell an audio book upsell at? Good question. So, um, it depends what you're pairing it with. So what I always suggest is the audio book by itself, if, if you have nothing to compare it to, meaning there's, there's no, you know, like bonus mm -hmm. with the audio book, then they're thinking of it like, Audible, right? Yeah, you can like, get an Audible for ten, twelve, right. you know, twelve ninety five, something like that. So you don't, you you want to as much as you as much as you can, like put yourself in a completely different category. So what we do is we offer like this, um, this 
a six-step training class that we put together. It's actually, I used to do these two-day events. I haven't done one in a couple of years, but I've done dozens of these two-day events, and we professionally recorded it all. Uh, it's it's uh, six different classes and, you know, wrote all this copy on it. And so we sell that for $47. Uh, and okay. we get about a 20% take rate, um, 18, 19% take rate good. Uh, in thousands of sales. So one out of five basically say, here's another 47 bucks. Sure. Yeah. And then I know the bumps usually convert really well, at least the ones that we've used before. And those are yep. typically what, like a little lower priced, um, I'm sure it's what about like under fifty dollars typically is what I've seen. Thirty-seven. Our bumps are thirty-seven. There we have go. a couple of different bumps. Um, when all is said and done for us, uh, an, an average client to us, average cart value, right? Someone mm -hmm. that comes in thinking they're just going to give us seven dollars and ninety-five cents, mm -hmm. on average, gives us just under forty dollars. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I can spend forty dollars to acquire that person and basically break even. Yeah. And, and, uh, again, we go in the hole a little bit, but, but not, not too terribly much. Not terrible. No, that's, I mean, this is so cool. And, and, uh, I'm sure, you know, if I ask this question of, do you need to have a publisher for your book? Your answer is probably big fat. <laughs> no, I would assume <laughs> no, <laughs> like a traditional no, publisher. I, traditional. Yeah. Yeah. Traditional publisher. Um, first of all, a traditional publisher generally is going to write you a check. And, and oftentimes that check is a small check unless you have a giant audience. You have right. a giant audience, then they'll write you a big check, but that's because you're going to go to work for them, right? Mm -hmm. You become an employee and they got you on the road for a year, you know, hawking your book. You're yep. going to get to keep 50 cents to a dollar of it and they keep the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And so um, most, of, most of my clients don't have, you know, a giant platform and audience, even though these are, you know, in, in some cases, you know, eight, nine figure businesses that oh, they yeah. run. Yeah. Uh, but they, they do it without a giant Facebook profile. Who knew that you could make that much money without Facebook? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, the, you don't need that. And, and unfortunately, that check that they write you comes with a lot of baggage. Like yeah. you don't own the rights to the book. And, um, and not owning the rights to the book means that you have to buy the book from them. And that oftentimes makes it too expensive to run a free plus shipping funnel. Uh, yeah. So, Got so it. you want to you want to own the rights and you want to get a fulfillment company to do all the printing for you and 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 then it makes it it makes it simple. And I think in most of those scenarios too that that sort of like upfront you know signing bonus or whatever they call it um, yep. that that money you you essentially still owe them that money back in book sales and you'll never see a single royalty on your book sales again until you surpass that amount of money that they originally paid you. So exactly exactly and 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 good luck trying to use that book in any way in the future. Wow. Or even, you know, the, the, the theme of it, right? The title of it, the, the content of it, the images of it. Right. Uh, you, you have sold it and, mm. and you sold it for whatever that dollar amount is. And unfortunately, people do that all the time for like five grand, 10 grand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. Which is nuts. Wow. It's, it's, it's I crazy. Mean, they just don't understand the implications of it. Uh, yeah. Or, they don't or know I what guess they're doing. Confidence right. in marketing or simple model, just like you laid out here. I mean, that could be completely life changing, like yeah. it was for you. Yeah. Well, there's a reason that like publishing houses have their names at the top of big buildings. That's right. right? <laughs> like, it's like casinos, right? Making a lot of money here, and yeah, it's yeah. not the author. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm curious, how involved are you in like the landing page building and like the ads and all that kind of stuff? Is that like your team's handling that, or or do you kind of have your hands in, in a lot of that stuff too? I, I like that stuff. Like I have my hand in it. Um, I, I enjoy it. It's, it's kind of, you know, if, if I didn't enjoy it, I probably could outsource it. But mm. my first hire when I moved to California nine, nine years ago was, was a guy that, that is still with me every day in my office. Steve, he's fantastic. My director of technology and he and I work together every single day, new funnels, new offers. How nice. are the ads doing? What's going on? I just love it. Yeah. I, I love it. You don't have to. Well, that's like me. Like I, that's me in our business. I oh, yeah. still do the media buying and I still build yeah. a lot of our landing pages. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I I'm, I'm with it. you there. I, I really, really enjoy it. But the, the reason I was asking that was I was curious if there was like certain types of landing pages that you've seen to, that, to make the book sell well, because I, I've sort of noticed a, a kind of trend in the design of these free plus shipping. It seems like, mm. you know, there's a, a sales video on the top. There's this sort of checkout on the right. And then there's kind of like long form sales copy to get somebody to pay you, you know, six or seven ninety five, which I always yeah. thought was very interesting. Like, why do you need so much copy to 
sell something that's you know seemingly an impulse buy almost. Yeah, yeah, you're you're 100 right. I mean, we've tested a lot of different things. There's kind of two genres, right? Mm -hmm. One genre is what you just described, and the video is really important, by the way, right? Mm -hmm. Like you need a strong video. Uh, I've seen some people with really weak one to two minute videos, and their you know their percentage is is you know too low to make it profitable. Yeah. So you need a great video and yeah, you do need strong copy and you need, you know, we have tons of videos and people hold their books up and yeah. you know, all this social proof. Yeah. Uh, the other, other genre is, you know, like, uh, you know, like what you've seen Kern do, uh -huh. uh, which, which you see a number of people uh, do it and, and it, it tends to do really well too. And that's, you know, literally no video and, yeah. but it is a long form sales letter basically mm -hmm. that, that leads to the purchase as well. Um, we've tried both and, and the video, whether I just like video or I feel like I'm more comfortable on video, that tends to convert better for us. And, uh, and that's what Brunson uses. And, and mm -hmm. you see a lot of people really successfully using that more than just the, the long copy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I've always just found it so interesting because it's, you know, for me, like I'll land on a free plus shipping page and usually I'm just like, yeah, the headline <laughs> got me by, yeah. you know, <laughs> seven bucks, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's who we are, right? We're, yeah. mm. you know, we're the guys that are in that world. So we're just buying and I'm buying and recording. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's almost like buying to learn, you know, the totally. process more than the actual content in some cases. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Like all that's, those books behind you, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're saying they're all free plus shipping. Yeah, None of them have ever been read. <laughs> doesn't read. It looks like, <laughs> um, so then, then going to the ads, um, is you know, obviously on Facebook, you got video ads and image ads and lead ads and all the various types of ads. Is there is there anything that you've noticed works better than other things for driving traffic into these book funnels? You know, I'd love to tell you the ads are complicated. They're not. Mm. Um, you know, the best ads for us are like uh, book flip ads, right? So like where, you know, we have a book uh, that, you know, just shows a cover. It shows like one of my, one of my um, female employees just opening the book and kind of flipping through it. That just oh, kills. Man. Wow. Um, does, uh, it, does it require like uh, diagrams and pictures or is it literally just flipping through text? Page? You know, <laughs> it's literally flipping through. Wow. Um, we have a couple that are with diagrams and pictures and those do really well too. But like the book flip ad works really good. Uh, you've probably seen a ton of people that actually light their books on fire. Um, um, you know, I don't think but, I've seen that. I, I don't oh, know. Yeah. I don't think I've seen one of those either. Actually, oh, Payne June is running one right now for Russell Brunson's uh, new Traffic Secrets book. Okay, uh, and and Russell did it really successfully. Um, you know, any great testimonial videos with people holding your book up, especially if they're an influencer, hmm. uh, that works really really well. But it, it's simple for us. It's video. Sometimes it's image, uh, mm -hmm. but again, it's image of a book of the book itself and. It's not complicated and the copy is really simple and you know, just here it's free, just yep. pay for a small shipping charge. It's not rocket science. Love it. I like that answer. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't need yeah. rocket science answers. <laughs> yeah. You I mean, when I hear answers like that, it just makes me think, yeah, I probably overcomplicated it last time and that's probably <laughs> the problem. <laughs> Likely so. <laughs> yeah, Man. I mean, we, we do try uh, you know, a lot of different creatives. Um, mm -hmm. But ultimately, the ones that work great for us are the ones with people holding the book up, yeah. flipping through the book, that kind of thing. And and it's, you know, it, and, and the copy is simple, too. Yeah. I mean, that just, I love it. I mean, the whole model just seems like a closed loop system in a way. You know, it's, it's start, finish here, promotion. A lot yeah. of folks have some kind of offer that they're trying to bring qualified folks in the door with. And it's kind of like this podcast, you know, if you can get someone to really understand how you speak and who you are, the credibility is there, packaged up in a book, there's a video, and then there's an opportunity to actually get some personal time or some high touch element for a high price. Yeah. I mean, you're probably likely to convert really well. Yeah. You know, without anything yeah, complicated. You know, probably just like this podcast, you know, there, there are people, uh, you know, just last week, a uh, client, um, you know, overseas, long way away, lives in the Middle East and, uh, he had already become a client and, and wired us a very, very large sum of money, mm -hmm. full pay. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one with me, which I'll do with, with some of the clients. I don't do it with every single one, but if they requested, of course. Mm -hmm. And so I, we did a quick video. And, and first thing he did is he held up my book mm -hmm. and he's like, Rob, I read it cover to cover 
And when I filled out the application, I, I knew I was just going to get started with you. I knew you, I, wow. I knew your, your team was who I wanted to work with. And I'm like, you know, first of all, you know, how hard was it for the sales guy to close that deal? Right. <laughs> exactly. That's easy money. <laughs> it is. But, yeah. but you know, I mean, there's this familiarity, right? Yeah. Uh, they, they, they begin to get to know you that's happening without you even knowing it's happening. Right. And people come, you know, not everybody, of course, but, but some people come, you know, with just wire transfer, check in hand, credit card in hand, because sure. they just know I, I've been ready to do this. You're the people I want to do it with. Yeah. yeah. And the book just built up that credibility and sort of it did, it all. It did all the heavy lifting. Yeah. Right? Further solidified. This is the person I want to work with. Hmm. Yeah, love it. 100%. I love it. And that's what we kind of experienced a smidgen of that, not with leading with the book, but with the podcast. And we had yeah. a mastermind at PodFest, you know, last week. And, you know, we had about almost 20 people there that paid quite a bit, you know, it was four figures for most folks. And, um, and it was great because it was all on the back of this podcast. It was a very trust, trust thing. I mean, it wasn't more than a couple emails for most people. And like, and then the ones I couldn't attend, they're like, oh my God, I'm just kicking myself. I couldn't travel or something. I'm like, yeah. It's just cool when you have a yeah you, know, you have a group of people that are really into what you have and they just trust you. Yep. It just makes the selling process much easier and and honestly, I think there's better action taking from their point of view as well yep. uh, when it's someone that they trust as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean they they listen to your podcast. Uh, yeah. They like you. Uh, that that may be the first step. They get to know you, they like you, and then eventually, as they see your success and say, "Well, they're offering something that I want. Mm. They're good at it. I know them and like them already." <laughs> it's done. There's what no, else do you need? Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing else needed, right? It's just okay. Yeah. How do I pay? Where's the button? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and, and Which I mean, for the longest the time we weren't hanging that button around. We're like, "What is wrong with us?" <laughs> it's true. <laughs> So uh, the, I think the last kind of little la rabbit hole I want to go down is is maybe a little bit on the tech side of things. I'm assuming you're using ClickFunnels. I think the the yeah. sales mm -hmm. uh, the sales page I saw was ClickFunnels. So what does it look like when somebody goes through that that offer? Is there somebody sitting there waiting for the order to come in and they're putting a book in an envelope and shipping it off? You know how how is the fulfillment handled after somebody orders a book? God, no, uh, not that way because, man, no one would get their books if it was happening in my office. Well, um, yeah, Bob tries to do it for you. Yeah, Bob, but... my dog tries to do it, but he <laughs> put the books up. Um, no, we, we, use, um, we use a guy uh, in, in uh, your area, Mike Fredericks, um, okay. for all of our fulfillment. Uh, and, and we use uh, ShipZoom in the past, and, and they were good. There's, a, there's several other fulfillment houses. We love Mike because, first of all, Mike's an awesome guy, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, they do all the printing for us. Uh, it's connected to ClickFunnels, so you know everything's integrated. As soon as the sale is made, they know it. And yes, there's somebody on their team that is taking a book out of inventory, putting it in a you know in an envelope, and shipping it out usually the next day. And so yeah. all of that is outsourced. Uh, it costs us about seven fifty to eight dollars to print, um, uh, fulfill, and ship wow. one book. And okay. uh, so literally what we're saying, seven ninety five, is what it cost us to, you know, ship and fulfill mm -hmm. that book. And all of it is completely hands off for us. Um, it, and that's all, in the U.S., right? So will, will you ship outside of the U.S. or is it only? <clears throat> we do. Um, we stopped. We used to advertise heavily outside the U.S., the free plus shipping offer, mm -hmm. and charge fourteen ninety five mm -hmm. for that. We don't do that as much. We, we do ship here to Canada. The biggest problem was that it was taking so long that we got so many complaints mm -hmm. and so yeah. many people were like, where's my book? And my book didn't come or whatever. And uh, so we felt like, okay, let you know, U.S. is 300 million people. I think we can find a few clients yeah. there. Right. So, <laughs> You're so we good. focus on U.S. and Canada. Yeah, yeah. I think we're using Lulu.com to have our yep. books uh, fulfilled. I mean, yeah. I don't really have an opinion on them. They're, they, they do the job, but you know, we're, all, we're always kind of shopping around and seeing if there's better alternatives out there. I guess the point being you, you is- You love Mike. Yeah. yeah you, Mike. you love Mike. Great guy. Cool. And he's in San Diego too? Yeah, he is. Uh, maybe it's Irvine. Irv he's in, he's in uh, yeah. SoCal. So, so in between so us. <laughs> Newport, Irvine- Laguna, somewhere down there. I've never been to the, to his place, but yeah. great guy. And you know, we totally connected first before we started doing business together. And nice. and I love the work they do for us. Yeah, and I, I always kind of prefer working with sort of people versus you know faceless companies. In any always, always, me too. Yeah. 
Well, we just got to get that going. Got to get a get a book out there. Then <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> the next plan, or relaunch one of our existing books and make it work this time. <laughs> make it work. That, that'll work too. That's right. If you got a book hanging around, then relaunch it and, and do it do right. Some cool things with that. You got the model now. Very well, cool. Yeah, Absolutely. man. I mean, so what's what's the future look like for your company? Or do you have any other books of your own coming out? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got two I'm working on right now. Um, you know, the, the, the one that we use is Publish, Promote, Profit. That's kind of our primary um, book. And that gives the whole, kind of our whole trademark system. Hold that in the uh, screen really quick so we can get a little screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's there it, it is. Publish, nice. Promote, Profit. The Go new rules it. of writing, marketing, and making money with a book. Nice. Um, that's our whole kind of process. Uh, tons of case studies and, and examples in it. I'm writing a book on how to write a legacy book because I think that that's a really big market that is underserved. Yeah. Uh, man, should I say that to all your people? Man, someone's <laughs> going to knock me off now. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're leading with the good stuff, man. It's all good. <laughs> uh, and so I'm writing, I'm writing that book, and, and I'm also like writing uh, not quite a uh, funnel book book, Mm -hmm. But um, but something along the lines of using a book to make money, uh, using a book to grow your business with just the focus on after the book, what mm -hmm. what happens. So those are two that I'm working on right now. Lexi book's pretty close. So we'll probably launch that in the next two months. I think that would be a hit. I mean, I would assume the legacy market. I mean, shoot, who doesn't want to leave a mark or even write it for their kids alone, you know, and exactly. just say, hey, that's my dad's book, my mom's book right there. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean. You know, I, 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 uh, I've done some books for some pretty, you know, big time uh, wealth advisors and mm -hmm. financial advisory people, and they always have the legacy element in their books. And so I got to talking with one of them, and uh, he said, you would be shocked the number of wealthy people, and obviously there's, there's more baby boomers that are retiring, you know, 10,000 or so a day, mm -hmm. and they're, pa they're passing on, I think, some ungodly amount of money to the next generation, like $7 trillion. Wow. But, but unfortunately, I mean, he was telling me, he's like, look, after, after you know, Pawpaw is dead, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the next generation doesn't even, like, like that person is forgotten. Yeah, and, and, quickly, uh, too. Yeah. And, and, and it's not that they're not love. It's just that you, you move on with your life. And so I just thought, man, I mean, wouldn't these people want, like, I, will, I would like that from my ancestors. Of course. You know what I mean? I, oh, yeah. I, I would like something where I could read about them from a hundred years ago or, or even just 50 years ago. I don't have mm -hmm. anything like that. I just thought they're passing on the wealth, their financial wealth, but they're not pa passing on their real wealth, yeah. which is their life lessons, their story. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, look, maybe it fails, but I just, I, I just thought it's what I would want. So Maybe someone else does too. I, I think I think it's going to be good. <laughs> I haven't heard of anyone doing that. And if you, well, it yeah, makes you me think of the, the Gary Halbert letters, right? All of mm. those were essentially written to his son as like his yeah. legacy. That's right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, I'm writing a book for my kids too called "Things You Should Know." Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I think I said all these things, but I'm not sure that they know any of them. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm going to write these things. Down. <laughs> you have no excuse now. <laughs> That's right. That's I'm right. I know I taught you this stuff, but just in case, here it is in writing. <laughs> I'm even going to do an audio book so you can't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's good, man. Well, Rob, this is cool. And um, so I think that touches everything that I had on. Oh, yeah. We, I think we covered a ton more. of ground. <laughs> we right? did. We, did. we got yeah. a... And you're bummed. I know you, you didn't golf today. <laughs> Got rained out. I know. I, know. I was I, well. I played eight holes, but I was soaking oh. wet like a wet rat, and, uh. and I was playing well too. I'm like, man, I Dang wanted to stick around. I know, but <laughs> but you're right. I'm 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 a little bummed about that. But happy any, to be with you guys. Yeah, I know this is cool, man. Um, so what's uh? Well, I was asked, but what's a book that you actually recommend to others that you find yourself maybe going to often, or you just give out more than often, or more often? You know, it's it's always something new for me um, mm. personally, um, and we might have talked about this before or not. I don't remember, but my favorite author, maybe ever, is uh, C.S. Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> C.S. Lewis is just one of the most brilliant thinkers of the of the twentieth century, I think. And uh, most people think of him, you know, for his fiction, but his sure. nonfiction is just amazing. It, it obviously, you know, spiritual focus. Uh -huh. But but uh, very very cool stuff. So I always talk about C.S. Lewis because I'm I read C.S. Lewis almost every day. Wow. Um, the the stuff that I'm reading right now is the stuff on my shelves. Uh, you know, I'm probably the only other 
one that I love that I've read recently is uh, Jordan Peterson's, you know, 12 rules. Yeah. 12 I love rules. that book. I love his thinking. Um, you know, yeah. some people, I, I don't want to politicize it in any way. It's not about politics, but I just love the way he thinks. And I love how, you know, I have, I have three boys, mm -hmm. you guys know that and, mm -hmm. and they're young men. And so, you know, he, he's, you know, he speaks a lot to young men. And so I often think about my boys and I think mm. about, you know, how uh, sometimes growing up in this society uh, and in social media and this culture is so much harder for them than it was for me. Mm. And uh, so what Peterson speaks about and what he's written speaks to me because yeah. I think about my kids. And, That's and his, his episodes on the Joe Rogan show are really good, too. Oh, man. <laughs> they yeah. are awesome. I, yeah. I, I watch them over and over, man. Same, I, mean, I have, too. Yeah. Oh, I love him. I mean, he is, he is, he's such a brilliant thinker, man. I mean, just yeah. so brilliant. Very needed right now, as you said. Yeah, wow. with a lot of yeah. distractions. I think, yeah, you need that solid, like, hey, this is what you need to show up in the world like. So, I good totally recommendation. Agree. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, awesome. I love that book. Yeah, well... Let's uh, wrap it up. Where should folks go find you, explore more, maybe dig into one, you know, find your book? Yeah, you know, uh, obviously the best way there is publishpromoteprofit.com. Uh, mm -hmm. They can always find more about me on my website, which is bestsellerpublishing.org.org. Uh -huh. People always ask, why isn't it .com? <laughs> well, I own the .com too, but I started with the .org because the .com wasn't available <laughs> 10 years ago. No, that was I actually a question, it. Matt, too. I was like, it's interesting. You don't see a lot of orgs, but I love that you yeah. have both and you kept the org. <laughs> yeah, I kept the org and I just send all the traffic from the .com to the .org. So, there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, it does the trick. <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually telling traffic Matt. Anyway, so it's not SEO. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. true. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome, man. Um, Rob, appreciate your time, man. And I know we'll do some more stuff together. And, and uh, you know, I love the model and everything you have. So it's something most people, as Matt just shut off his computer. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> can't see anymore. <laughs> put the screen to sleep by accident. There we're we go. Good, though. <laughs> I just think I'm what sure. you have there is super powerful, man. And, and anyone who has, you know, some kind of high ticket thing or, or just wants to get more qualified buyers in the door, this is the thing for them. Yeah. yeah that's what Thank we're you. Gonna Thank you. I really, really appreciate you guys. Loved spending time with you guys in, in Florida. Just felt like we, I mean, we hit it off and, seemed like we had so many things in common. So thank you. Thanks yeah, for the of offer for me to be on the podcast and, and uh, have more fun with you guys. Of yeah. course, man. We'll pet Bob for me down there. <laughs> I don't know if you heard of me barked a second ago. So oh, yeah. he was like, Such Oh, I want to say hi. Yeah. a boy. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> All right, Rob. Well, right. Have a good one, man. <laughs> Thanks guys. See you later. See Bye. Thanks so much for tuning into that episode. I hope you dug it. I know Joe and I dug it. I actually kicked Joe out of the room. He's not here right now because I wanted to tell you about a tool that I really, really dig. We use it in our business. We recommend it all the time. It's called easy webinar and it's a tool that lets you do live webinars, automated webinars, hybrid webinars, and, uh, you know, pretty much any other kind of webinar if there are other kinds of webinars. But anyway, this tool is kind of like your all in one do it all tool for anything webinar related. It's easy webinar. It's put out by a dude named Casey Zeman. He's been on the podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode, it's a killer episode. He's a really smart dude, but his software is amazing. It does everything. It's, you know, the title tells you exactly what it does. It's an easy webinar platform. And we use this in our business to run automated webinars all the time. We don't do a lot of live webinars these days. We like to do the kind of automated webinars where somebody can register and then it, you know, they can either watch it like 15 minutes later or they can watch it the next day, but it's just kind of always running. And it's a system that helps us make autopilot sales off of our webinars. Super cool tool. If you haven't tried it yet, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing tool. And, uh, Casey is actually hooking you up. He said for listeners of Hustle and Flowchart, I can't believe he's doing this, but he said for, for listeners of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast, he's giving 25% off of the membership to use Easy Webinar. It's already super, super inexpensive for what it does and all the cool features it has, but he's hooking you up with 25% off because you're a listener of Hustle and Flowchart. Go to easywebinar.com slash hustle. That's where you can get that 25% off discount. That's easywebinar.com slash hustle. It's a awesome tool. You're going to dig it. 
So just go grab it. Check it out. Easywebinar.com slash hustle. See ya. No, not see ya. You'll hear me in the next show. I don't know. I don't know how to close these things. Go get Easy Webinar. Talk to you later. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. Before taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out all the good stuff from this episode we actually have a nice simple notes version that you can find on our website so go to evergreenprofits.com find this episode that you just listened to and uh, give us your email address and we'll send you the notes thanks for listening <laughs>